friends to Build A Lot Acres. My name is Case, and in today's episode, we're going to be discussing the Case Ingersoll garden tractors and why I consider them the best garden tractor of all time. Stay tuned. One small town New England family living out their adventures, one day at a time, sharing for the whole world to see. This is Build A Lot Acres. Please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's video. So in case any of you are wondering, what other brands have you even used to make such a claim? Well, I've owned John Deere, Case, Simplicity, Sears, Craftsman, Gilson, Massey Ferguson. I've owned a number of different brands of garden tractors and I have to say Case Ingersoll is my personal favorite and I'm gonna get into why in today's video. I did wanna shoot this video outside but there's just too much wind today and there's a lot of planes going overhead so I just couldn't get enough of a quiet moment to film the video so here we are in a workshop but so a little bit of brief history before we get started for those not familiar with the brand so in the early 1960s about 1962 there was a pair of brothers the Johnson brothers who came up with their own garden tractor called the cult garden tractor which utilized a hydraulic drive system, which they named the Cultomatic. So they operated it for about two years. They really weren't businessmen per se. They ended up selling it off to the giant J.I. Case Corporation who already had a huge line of tractors and they wanted to include small gun tractors to put in their line. So they bought it in about 1964, operated it for about 20 years, ended up selling it to a fellow named Jack Ingersoll who is a member of the Ingersoll Rand family, but it's not associated. A lot of people make that mistake. They think Ingersoll tractors or an Ingersoll Rand are the same company, but they're not. So although he was a member of the family, it wasn't the family's business, it was just his. So he took over the business from Case and bought it in late 1983, early 1984. He operated it for a number of years, ended up selling it to a German company called Rothenberger, who kind of founded it. They sold it off to Eastman Industries out of Maine, and they operated it. It had a lot of big plans for the line, actually, but the owner ended up getting in a bad accident in which he ended up succumbing to his injuries and passing away, sadly. And then the whole lot in the business for the Ingersolls got sold off, and it's no longer a thing. And it was one of the last true guiding tractors left, and it's kind of a sad ending, but it is what it is. But at least we have the old classics to look back at, reminisce, and still use. So let's get into the reasons why I think Case Ingersoll is one of the best garden tractors out there. So one of the big reasons I really like Case Ingersoll is the high wheel series tractors that Case and Ingersoll had. So they had three main series. They had the Case Ingersoll Low Pros, which were the 200 series Case and the 3000 series Ingersoll. That series would have utilized the 12 inch rear rim with a 23 inch tall tire which was pretty much the industry standard for 90% of garden tractors, regardless of brand. And then they had this series, the High Wheeler series, which would be the 400 series case and the 4000 series Ingersolls. Now those utilized a 16 inch rear rim, resulting in a monstrous 32 inch tall tire. Now that provided maximum traction, maximum ground clearance, and in my opinion, maximum looks. Really gives it that classic farm tractor look, don't you think? So the last series they had would have been the High Loader Series, which was a dedicated loader. That would have been the 600 Series Case and then the 6000 and 7000 Series Ingersolls. So you ask yourself, does that big tire really make that much of a difference? Well, let's compare it to a normal 23 inch tall tire. So when you look at one in front of the other, it becomes incredibly apparent just how much bigger the 8x16 tires are versus your standard 23 inch tall garden tractor tire, which like I said, 90 to 95% of garden tractors had that size. You can quickly see just how much bigger it is. That's gonna mean you're sitting higher up, more ground clearance, more traction, just overall cooler looks. And there's a lot of big advantages to the bigger tires. So that's one of the things I really like about the Case Ingersoll Garden Tractors is that they offered a series with tires that big. Now that's not to say other brands didn't offer big tires. There are other brands. One that really comes to mind quickly would be Power King, who also offered an 8x16 rear tire, as well as a 24-inch rim 
on some Power King models, which meant about a 38 to 40 inch tall tire. So I'm not saying that Case Ingersoll is the only brand that offered big tires like this, but they're one of the only brands. So let's get into my second point. So the second thing I really like about the Case Ingersoll Garden Tracks is probably the most important thing actually is a hydraulic drive system. So whereas a lot of brands are going to either have a geared transmission or a hydrostatic transmission, the Case Ingersoll has utilized a hydraulic drive system. A lot of people are going to think hydrostatic and hydraulic and interchange them and think they mean the same thing. A lot of people mistakenly call these Case Ingersolls hydrostatic because they don't know the difference, but there are major differences between the two, and we're going to get into those right now. now I want you to take note of something in here. It's an easy center, open walkthrough design. A lot of brands are going to have a center hump in the middle. That's going to either be for a drive shaft or a geared transmission in that spot. Whereas Case does not have that hump. It's an easy walkthrough design, easy to get on, easy to get off. And that's going to be especially handy if you're elderly, maybe you have a disability, you have limited mobility or anything of that sort. So this is another thing that really helps with a hydraulic drive system. So let's take a look at some of my other garden tractors and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to show you guys three other garden tractors I own and the differences. Simplicity Sunstar, center hump. See his SS14, center hump. Simplicity Power Max, again, center hump. Oh, I'm just gonna take a seat here. It's really hot today. Uh, excuse my sweatiness. About 95 degrees Fahrenheit today, and it's sweltering out. So sticking on to the hydraulic theme, a lot of people confuse and interchange mistakenly hydraulic and hydrostatic. So a hydraulic system like this actually utilizes a constant or a fixed displacement pump, whereas a hydrostatic system is going to use a variable displacement pump. Why does that matter? Well, this pushes out the full amount of fluid in every revolution, whereas a variable speed like a hydrostatic has can go anywhere from zero to full tilt. And at the end of the day, the difference being this hydraulic system is capable of putting out 8 to 10 gallons per minute at 2200 PSI. But in contrast, most hydrostatic systems are going to be putting out up to 5 gallons per minute at about 1000 PSI. So about half the amount at half PSI. So that's going to really open up a lot of doors. There's a lot of rear implements that the Case Ingersoll has had that you would never be able to run on a normal hydrostatic system with other brands. Things such as wood chippers, wood splitters, brush hogs or rough cut mowers. Those are all commonly used on these machines with a rear hydraulic PTO. And most brands to operate that kind of equipment, you're gonna need a separate hydraulic pump and motor on the implement just to run the implement. So that twice as much hydraulic flow with twice the pressure really gives you the ability to run implements that you would never normally be able to run on a garden tractor with a hydrostatic transmission. So I think the last thing I'm going to talk about that I really like about the Case and Ingersoll Garden Tractors is a snap fast implement hookup system up front. It's so easy to hook implements up by yourself. It doesn't take very long at all. In addition to that, it allows you to use implements from a number of different decades and they all fit. I know a lot of brands, I don't want to call out any specific brand, but a lot of brands change implements and they change the hookup system for different models. So. Your implement that you just bought for your tractor, if you sell it in a few years and get a new model, might not fit that new model anymore. You gotta get a whole new implement. That's not the case with the case, pun intended. So let's see just how long it takes me to hook up the 54 inch snow plow by myself here in the 95 degree heat. I'm not gonna speed this footage up. This is gonna be real time. Let's see.
right, so I actually put it in the wrong hole in the adapter plate, but you guys tell me how long, what was that, two or three minutes? I mean, it really doesn't take long at all. It would add a little bit of time if you had like a snowblower, because you have to also do the belt onto the engine pulley. But generally speaking, you should be able to switch out attachments in about five minutes, maybe 10 minutes tops. And I think that's a huge advantage over some of the other brands is how easily the attachments hook up and the range of years you can use attachments tractor to tractor. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and why I feel K-Single Saw is one of the best garden tractors ever made. See you next time.